Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and as you guys know, I have been doing a lot of traveling this year, going to a bunch of retro gaming expos. And while normally when I fly in the past, I would take, uh, I don't know, maybe the Nintendo Switch or the Vita, but since I got the Steam Deck, that has been my gaming handheld of choice while flying. And overall, it's been a very positive experience. However, I wanted to talk about two issues that I've ran into while flying in this video. But before I do, I do wanna mention that the Steam Deck community is very passionate about this handheld and rightfully so, I am right there with you. I love this thing. It is one of the better purchases I have made in the last couple of years. It's fantastic, and so please don't take this video as me trashing the device in any way. It's really meant to provide some feedback to the developers and also maybe stir up some conversation around some of the things I've ran into. And the two problems I've ran into while flying with the Steam Deck is really launching some of the games, getting them to run, and also dealing with battery life. Now, the first issue I want to talk about is getting some of these games to run, specifically when you are flying and you are in airplane mode, right? You don't have internet access. Now, if you bought the game directly from Steam and it's verified to work on the Steam Deck, in general, most of these verified games just launch and play just fine. But the issue that you run into is that your entire Steam library is available to you. And so of course you're gonna to wanna to try and play a different mix of games that may either not be 100% verified or maybe they are like, you know, some of the EA origin titles or perhaps some of those GOG titles that you can play through the heroic launcher. What you're gonna to wanna to do is go into game info and then go down to details and that's where you can see all of the things that may or may not work on the Steam Deck. However, at the bottom there, you'll notice that it'll, you know, sometimes have information about whether or not this game is going to require you to have an internet connection just to launch it the first time, or perhaps have, you know, a persistent internet connection, which obviously on a plane you most of the time will not have. However, it's more complicated than that because some of these games like, you know, using the Origin Launcher, well, they want to just simply authenticate. Now, you can kind of get around this if you authenticate, let's say, in your hotel room before you actually leave to get on a plane or maybe in your house. And then you can sometimes try to go to set it to offline mode. The really weird thing about this is, is that you can't really do this when you are in the game mode. You have to actually go switch over to desktop mode because then it basically gives you the different apps running down at the bottom and you can more easily kind of manage this. Does that make sense? And so in my experience, this actually works really well with a game like Need for Speed Heat because I authenticated into Origin when I was home and you know on an internet connection, but later on when I'm on a plane, it doesn't seem to care whether I have that connection or not. And so it just launches right into the game and works just fine. But the weird thing is it's not every time. So for instance, I couldn't get Star Wars Fallen Order to work at all, which is kind of dumb because I did pretty much all the same things. I authenticated while I was on an internet connection, but then for some reason, the game just would not let me launch it when I was in airplane mode with no internet connection, which is dumb, right? Because this game, is completely offline. There is no reason why this, this shouldn't allow you to launch. And I guess that leads me to my, my, it's not a complaint really, but it's something that I would like to see brought to some of these games in the future. And that is just basically be aware that you are in airplane mode on the Steam Deck, right? I mean, just, just somehow detect that there isn't an internet connection and say, hey, we notice that you're not on the internet, you know, would you like to run in offline mode? That's all I'm asking right here. And I get it that developers want to have DRM. They want to, you know, have people pay for their games and not pirate them. I totally understand that. That's a hundred percent legit, right? But also too, I think it'd be very useful, especially now that we have something like the Steam Deck to have the opportunity for these games to recognize that, oh, you're in portable mode. Maybe you're traveling in a car or you're on a plane. And would you like to play this game offline 
for a certain amount of time, right? So maybe set a limit to 24 or 48 hours. You know, after a certain amount of time, the game won't launch unless you actually are online. But support it when people want to travel like this. I mean, that's all I'm really asking here. Another thing I ran into is that sometimes the Wi-Fi at an airport didn't want to connect to the Steam Deck, at least in game mode. And I think I figured out what was going on here. Basically, I had to boot the Steam Deck into desktop mode and then connect to their Wi-Fi because it was trying to launch a launcher, a, a landing page, a welcome page there where you either had to type in your name or your email address or maybe agree to uh, you know some terms or services or things like that. And then once you did that, then you could then reboot back into game mode and it seemed to connect to Wi-Fi just fine. I also ran into this when I was in a hotel room as well. The other challenge I ran into was trying to get the heroic launcher to work. Specifically, that's the community-driven third-party launcher that supports GOG games as well as the Epic Game Store. And for some reason, it was extremely difficult to get any GOG games to launch, which is odd, right? Because GOG games have no DRM. They are fully installed on your, your, your Steam Deck. And so there's really no reason why this shouldn't work, but it has something to do with the, the Heroic Launcher. I actually reached out to them. They said, yes, they are aware of it. Uh, they're probably going to work out what is going on here. But it was really weird because you know, I, I couldn't even really get into the settings sometimes of these games, or I'd have trouble bringing up my list of games because it just didn't understand that I didn't have an internet connection for some reason. So very bizarre. However, I do think that issue will eventually get fixed. I guess what I would like to see here happen with this is that pretty much every game basically have a little tag that would say online connection required and have it right up front when you are on the Steam Deck. That way it's very clear as to why this isn't launching. Or recognize that the Steam Deck is in airplane mode and then give you a certain amount of time to launch these games in offline mode. You know, again, like I said earlier, give us 24 or 48 hours to just play our games while we're traveling. That should cover pretty much most trips that people would take. And then after that time, make people log into the server and, you know, continue on their way. I think that's a that's a pretty good solution here. I'd like to see it happen. The next issue I ran into is gonna be no surprise, especially for something as powerful as the Steam Deck, and that is battery life. And this is both a good and a bad thing because obviously the Steam Deck is very powerful. It's able to run the latest AAA games in a portable handheld, which is freaking awesome. I love this thing for that reason but it also was able to play older games as well. And so depending on how demanding the game is on the hardware, you may get anywhere from, you know, an hour and a half, two hours max to maybe four, maybe six hours, best case scenario. And a lot of the games I was trying to play were really pushing that battery. And so I was on several flights that were three hours long. One of them was actually almost four hours long and I was barely getting two hours of gameplay on this. And so thankfully Valve has completely understood this problem and gives you a lot of tools that you can mess with to get more battery life if you want it. And so the first thing I did was bring up the performance overlay, which you see it here in the upper left, it's real time statistics as to how hard the, the Steam Deck is working when running the game. You see things like how hard the graphics processor is running, the CPU, also how much draw is on the battery. That's shown there in wattage. So uh, if you are higher in watts, that means you'll have less battery time. And it also shows the remaining time there. So it basically makes a guess as to how much battery life it thinks you have left. And then under that same menu, you can set a limit on the frame rate. And this is outside of the game itself. So obviously many games will have the option for you to set the frame rate, but here you can set it globally and basically try to get better performance on that. And you'll see that in those metrics up there. So when you drop it from 60 down to 30, then after a couple seconds or so, it'll start adjusting how much battery life it thinks you will get. And so dropping the frame rate from 60 to 30 is acceptable, right? I mean, it's not great. You wouldn't want to do it all the time, but 
I'm not saying that you would want to play all your games on the Steam Deck forever like this, but on a three hour flight, a four hour flight, if it would give you extra time to play your games, why not? Some people are finding that a nice compromise is to set the Steam Deck to 40 frames a second. By default, you don't have this option unless you drop the frame rate of the screen itself. So right there, right below that, you set that down to 40 as its max. And then now above that, you can set the frame rate also to 40. So basically it forces that Steam Deck into that mode and it's technically a little bit better than 30. It may not sound like a lot, but actually it feels for most people closer to 60 than you might expect. The other thing I wanna mention is that I started bringing power bricks with me because while a lot of flights might have an outlet for you to use, you know, like a USB cable, it's just not powerful enough to also give you enough juice on the Steam Deck to, to make that big of a difference. And so buying an external power brick has really changed it for me. In addition to giving me potentially a couple hours extra of battery life on my Steam Deck during a long flight, but that same power brick can also power my phone, my iPad, uh, if I need to charge my wireless headphones. And so I've gotten used to just throwing one of these in the side pocket of my backpack everywhere I go, and I always have more than enough power. Those are the two issues that I've had while flying with the Steam Deck. And like I said, I love this device. Overall, I am absolutely happy with my purchase. It's an amazing handheld. And quite frankly, it continues to evolve because Valve pushes out weekly updates for this. And that's not including all the updates that the community does. So it's very active right now. Speaking of, if you have a Steam Deck, I highly recommend that you join and follow the excellent Steam Deck subreddit community. It's full of users that are passionate about this handheld and they help each other with all the little things that can come up with it, whether it's issues with running games, maybe it's recommending accessories or perhaps you have to get it repaired, all those sort of things. It's definitely very active and I highly, highly recommend it. So anyways, guys, I'd love to know if you have a Steam Deck or perhaps you are waiting on one. I know that Valve has announced that they are ramping up production on this as well as expanding it worldwide. And so I definitely think that the Steam Deck is only gonna get more and more popular as more people get their hands on it. But as always, I wanna thank you for watching my channel. Thank you for subscribing and take care.